Hey guys, JH, welcome to the practice tea. Okay, today we're going to try and probably nail down channel lock to what I would suggest is pretty close to a finished product. Okay, now what, what I want to emphasize, guys, is that there is there is certainly a license to apply individuality to this golf swing you don't have to do it like like I do I do it because it suits me all you have to do and and, and it depends on your makeup and your flexibility and just your general feeling for the golf swing as to how you achieve the base part of the protocol and the base part of the protocol guys is the back foot ball position and the closed shoulders at impact here which means that if the shoulders are closed at impact and starting the downswing and the ball is back in that position there then the club has to swing beside the body and that beside the body is the channel that's the channel to the ball it's a channel that goes this way as a feeling. It goes straight there as a feeling. It's a straight line feel. It's not like a conventional golf swing where we've got the ball up here past the center of our body and we've got to get back to it somehow. Because this is always, that trail shoulder is always going to have a propensity to do something. Well guys, it has no propensity to do anything other than stay in a lockdown corralled position here. Because the ball's back there. If the ball was up here, how could I possibly keep the shoulders closed? I couldn't. The ball, the ball is, 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 is the number one atomic particle in this golf swing, guys. You have to have that ball position to get the channel lock because you can't keep your shoulders really closed and hit the ball with the feeling of beside the body. That's beside the body, that's in front of the body. Now, the other thing is how you how you set up your foot line, or what people call their stance line, is up to you. The only thing that's important is where your shoulders are aiming. Because guys, I keep saying, the arms are connected to the shoulders, they're not connected to the hips or the legs. So the shoulders are the only thing that have influence on that. Because the arms are connected to the shoulders, the hands are connected to the arms, they control where the golf club goes. The feet don't control anything. It's where the shoulder girdle goes is the path of the golf club. And that's, and that's what we've really got to get across as a simplistic understanding. This is what controls the path of the ball. Your stance has got nothing to do with it. So after we've set up, and we'll go back through it again, guys, if we're setting up square here to the ball, and we back cocked our shoulders here and we fired here, we'd be in this position here the ball would go straight over there because of the closed shoulders and the back ball position because that's how we're coming into the ball so we have to take that and bring it around to here it's still there but now we're firing this way which is towards the target so that's all you have to do guys you have to work out what that compensatory angle is and we did in the early days of channel lock you know we, we, we got here dead square then we just got across here whatever that angle was here and there's no point in showing you, you know, alignment rods, guys, unless it's from above, it doesn't mean anything. But at the end of the day, we've just got to get these shoulders pointing parallel or a little closed to the target line. Now, how you do that is trial and error. And you'll have to work out how much, how much you really have to be over here to back cock the shoulders, get them closed and get them in that position when you hit the ball. You'll just have to work that out, guys. You know, and if the ball's just going there, 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 you just, uh, <laughs> this big cow here. It is a cow paddock. Well, it's not really, it's a range, but the cows come in from the paddock here. And I don't know how they get across here. Um, yeah, so guys, this is the, the secret. The shoulders have got to be a little bit shut down or feel a lot shut down uh, to the target line. But they're not like that initially. Initially they're pointed way over there. So we have to take that way over there and bring it around to here. And whatever that is. 
But we're just, yeah, yeah, you like the swing, huh? Um, he's probably saying don't hit the ball up there because I'm going to be up there. So guys, the, the, the important thing is that, however, you can get your shoulders closed, the club attacking the ball from in here and hitting it towards the target. That's all you got to do. Now some guys are saying, or some or somebody said, that they have a bit of trouble with the open foot line because it creates too much tension and problems with the hips. Well guys, you don't have to have an open foot line. I don't have an open foot line anymore. Because I've got an innate built-in capability now where I basically know what my compensating angle is, which is this here, and then I just bring it around here. I bring this up. Here, back cock the shoulders to here. Now I'm, I'm in that position there, guys. It doesn't matter what happens with this, but it does make a big difference. If I bring that foot up there, that makes it really easy to make that backswing turn here. But if it's back here, oh, there's a lot of tension there and I can't make much of a turn. So don't get, don't get uh, caught up in having that open stance, which is, which is the initial open stance that, that, um, uh, that we use to, to get our compensators, to get our compensatory angle. Don't get caught up in that. Once that's here, guys, and we back cock the shoulders, it's all done. We can bring this up wherever we like. I actually play from a slightly closed stance now with my, my foot line. So that's important. Bring that, that lead foot up as much as you like because it's not going to affect where your shoulders are pointing. It can never affect where your shoulders are pointing. Well, anatomically it can because if I brought that up there, that brings my hip girdle around a lot which is going to take my trunk around and increase the shoulder closure. But that's a good thing. But you don't have to have the shoulders open, guys. You really don't. Oh, sorry, the, the foot line. So that's really, really important. So, so that's one of the you know, real issues that, you, that I had to address. Now, the other thing in terms of the finished product, guys, once we're here, the more we can get this club in line with that trail leg and the more cup we can get here, the better off we are. Now, we're not going to be like that when we hit the ball. So we're not, we're not reflecting, uh, address here is not reflecting impact. Impact is going to be there. We're not going to be back here. We're not going to be, you know, that, that's a negative load. So we're not going to go back here negative and then fire negative. You can't do that anatomically or just dynamically from a body a dynamics force application point of view. You can't do that. You can't go negative, negative. So I'm going to go negative, and then the club is going to go back here, and the sheer momentum and weight of it is going to pull positive, positive load on the club. So we'll, we'll be in that position when we hit it. But we set up like this, guys. The reason we set up like that is so that we can take the club in a straight line here. And the more perpendicular that club is, the closer I can stand to the ball. If I've got it like that, I mean, the balance factor's gone straight away. It's all over here don't want to be there. I want to be on this trail axis. And I, and I can just then side the club this way as a feeling. So this, so this is important, guys. It looks weird. But you've got to get that to be able to get that straight line backswing. You know, if I get here, I just can't have a straight line backswing. Look, I'm going to run into myself. Look, if I've got that shaft, I'm going to run into myself. Look. But here, I can just go here. There. That's, that's, that's the reason I do this, guys. Here, because I can go here. But if I'm here, I've got to go out here and then reroute the club. I don't want to do that. No wind today. Oh, just a tiny bit. Better than the hurricanes we've had lately. So, so this is important, guys. Try and, try and straight line. Trail leg, uh, trail arm, all straight line. Now the other thing is, really, really, you have to get your brain locked into a feeling and a program where we're straight lining here and we're straight lining towards the ball. We're feeling like the club's going there. Won't do that. 
but that's the feeling. We want the club feeling like it's going straight at the golf ball. Not that way. This is the big problem, guys. Anytime you feel in your brain and let the body take over that feeling or that direction or that instruction uh, that you want the club to go towards the target, it will, but you don't want to think that. Because as soon as you get that, guys, this is going to come forward. You're going to open the shoulders and you're going to pull the ball. You can't start the ball if you're right-handed. You can't start it to the right of the target line a little bit um, with the club coming from into out and a back ball position. You can't do that if the shoulders just get the slightest bit open. So, so, so they're the things that are the basics, basis of the protocol. Here, so we can go here. In the backswing, guys, I have a very definite feeling, I said the other day, this is a lot of revision, but I said the other day I feel this, this point of the shoulder here and this lat here just pushes the club back. In the, in the early piece of channel lock, when it was a one-sided swing at the, at the, initi the initiation of the concept, I very much had, a, had pulling the hands back. But I've evolved past that now. I've got a lot of connection, lots of connection. I feel like you know, the, the elbows are super glued to the body. So, so as I take it back, just by pushing that lead shoulder and that lat, watch the club, it goes here. It goes back in the channel straight away. It has to go there. Look, if I, don't, if I don't even move the club head and just push it, look, it just pulls the club here. It has to do that. So if you can get a little bit of that feel, that, that Count Yogi or that you know, Abe Mitchell type or you know, twirl and load type backloading on the club, that's a good thing, guys. Because the more backloading you get here, the more downloading you're going to get there. That's just a reality. I don't know anyone that could ever take a club back like that and then bring it back like that. The dynamic forces will not let that happen. The, sh the sheer physics of that. The rotational dynamics and the forces and the loads won't let that happen. So guys, the, pro the protocol is basically that. You don't have to really do anything else. Whatever you can do, and I probably look now, most times when I set up to the ball, that I've got no orientation left. But I have, initially, but then I back cock. But it's only because I built that I built that, um, that innate um, ability to, to target, to, uh, to, to a target, see. I'm over here, clearly that shoulder's over here, and I put the club down here, and, and then I just, and I just bring this foot up, and I just bring this up. The more I can feel that this lead shoulder is getting towards that trail foot, the better I am with my backswing. That's just the reality. That's just the reality, guys. So there's not much more than that in channel lock. Yeah, however you can get in the channel and however you can lock the delivery of the golf club in that channel to the ball is what it's about. How you do that. I've, I've given you the base um, tools to do that and the base mechanics that you can apply and the ones that I apply that suit me. But they may not suit you, but you may be able to formulate something yourself. But the, ma the, the main thing, guys, and, and, and the... Uh, the 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 core the core um, the core process core issue issues of uh, the protocol are the back ball position the closed shoulders and they stay there so that we can swing to the side of our body as a feeling we don't get we don't get that that in the shot we don't get that because it's very hard to keep your shoulders there, but we just want to keep them a little bit closed when we hit the ball. But we have to overdo it at our dress to get the little bit at, um, at impact. Now guys, as always, well, as of late, I mean, I just don't hit any shots anymore before I come on camera, just to show you that even when you're really dead cold and stiff, that you can just step up and if you apply the protocol, You can just hit it like that. First shot of the day. Dead cold. Dead cold, super stiff. Okay, a little bit short backswing, but, but the great, great thing is it just goes where I want it to go. It just does that, guys. And that's the thing you'll notice. And, and, and that's the thing that will eliminate a lot of the traditional anxiety of, uh, of starting around a round of golf or the first shot. 
you know, what was I doing before? How do I get into that position? What is the feel? Well, the feel of this is so emphatic, absolutely so emphatic, the guys, you really can't set up incorrectly. Once you get here, I'm over here, once you get here, then you back cock, and then you get here, and you just bomb it. I mean, that's just exactly the same shot. Now, now I've had a couple of people come on and say, Oh, you always say you hit the ball, the ball straight. Well, I do hit the ball straight. I do hit it straight. And there, there are plenty of videos to show down the line that I hit the ball straight. And, and anyone who had any type of ability to... Uh, and so you haven't got alignment sticks down. I've never used alignment sticks in my life, guys. Why would I use alignment sticks? Why would you ever use alignment sticks? I see the guys in the tour using it. Why would you do that? You can't use it when you play. Those alignment sticks have become a crutch for the brain and the program. They're seeing alignment sticks. Oh, yeah, this is great. This is how we set up. But when you ain't got those on the golf course, guys, the crutch is gone and you fall over accordingly. I have never used aids in teaching the golf swing ever for that reason. I'm too logical in terms of, of, of how we, we operate neurologically to go down that road. I don't want anything that I can't use in a golf swing. This is a digression, guys, but I never use artificial aids. I never have, ever. The only thing I ever used was, was, was a swing device that you could actually you know, set it for, and it was a sliding thing. You could set it for load. And that was just to give people the feeling of load in the golf swing. And then they transpose that to, um, to the golf club. But alignment aids, and this, is what, this is what the alignment aid is, these two things here, guys. That's what you do. Forget, you'll never see me using alignment sticks. I just don't go there. And you look at both on the, on the PGA Tour these days, look at every pro's bag, they've all got alignment sticks. <laughs> and what does that mean? Most times they'll just stand there and hit shots from the same place with the alignment sticks. Why would you do that? I never hit any two shots of the same target. I might vary it. I might be going up there, but I'll vary it a little bit right, a little bit left. I never try and hit the same shot. Because that just trains the brain for one type of shot, with one type of ori orientation. With this, this ground here, the sticks, that type of orientation, that feedback from, from that target out there, you don't get that in golf, guys. Every time you step over a golf ball, there's a different load of information, data coming into you. So you have to or orientate differently every shot you're playing a golf course. And that's why when I practice, uh, I try and hit a different shot or to a slightly different uh, target ratio when I'm hitting. I have to hit from in front of the camera, guys. Most of the time I can't step out. Um, but some guy came on and said, oh, you know, you haven't got the alignment six down. We don't know where you're hitting. Have a look at my body alignment and have a look where the ball goes relative to my body alignment. The ball goes on the body alignment. That's where it goes. Elementary, dear Watson. Have a look at the body alignment. But I find all that, guys. My alignment sticks are in my head. In my head. So here we are, guys. I mean, that just so... They're just exactly the same. And, and I haven't, since the first day I started this system, about a month ago now, I haven't hit one ball this way. There's no pull shots. You can't hit a pull shot from a back ball position and close shoulders. You cannot hit a pull shot. I'll just change the direction a little bit here. This is a little bit, little bit off, off camera line here. Now, guys, that's... You know, and people, you know, people take me to task for being excited about the shot. So I'm like, it's a great shot. It's gone straight at the target. Well, it has. Guys, pat yourself on the back when you hit a good shot. Build confidence. Build confidence. Just do that. Yeah, so I had just had a beam in my bonnet about that alignment thing. Uh, I just, you'll never see me work with alignment sticks. Ever. You just burn the target into your, into your brain, into your, um, the visual cortex, and there it is. And you'll get the feedback, guys. The difference you see between a good player 
and a, and a club player and a not so good player is their practice regime and the way they set up over the golf ball. This is a digression, but I think it's important. You know, the club player, this is, and invariably they come here and they get the range. And this is, this is the practice. They pull a ball across and this is it. They don't look up there. They have no target. They don't even know where the target is. They just hit it. But they, they're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not just, they're not focusing on the target. I mean, you've got to, you've got to have those, th and, and the last, if you, if you can, just before you take the, the club away, just reinforce with just one, one little, one little extra peak. Now that's, that's, that shot there is exactly, exactly the benefit of this, of this golf swing. I just, I just had to face slightly open on that shot there and it just pushed about five or eight yards. Just a straight push, but it's not going to kill me. That's the worst shot you'll get is a little push if the face is open a little bit. Now the other thing guys, what will give you height in the shot? People have been complaining about, or some people said they can't get height. Now guys, you won't get height in the shot if you don't fire the club at the ball. The moment you start orientating to think it's going this way, the blade is shutting down. If you think you're going towards the, the ball there, you'll get, you'll get the blade shutting down because it'll be this radial type process. Whereas if I think I'm going straight at the ball, this loft here, comes in and it's straight lined. It's exactly the same amount of loft because I'm thinking I'm going there. I don't get any any pre-impact roll on the club. So if you're hitting the ball lower, that's guys because you don't have enough commitment to hitting into out. Straight at the golf ball. At the ball, not the target. So that's what you've got to do if, if you're lacking height. And of course, we don't want any shaft lean on the club we possibly can get it. Now this is going to feel weird guys. When you set up and people look at you and say what's this guy doing? And then when you'll hit it they'll say uh, we want to do that. Because it's, uh, it's you know, the wind is entirely different. Eh? It's on my back. It's blowing this way. The other day it was knocking me over this way. Now it's coming this way. Yeah guys so, so you've got to be, you've got to have the, stand the shaft up and get as close to, close to it as you can. How close is close? You are, you are close enough to the ball, technically, or, or the right amount of closeness to the ball, <laughs> when you can hit it straight. So get in here, guys. Get, get inordinately close to the ball. Here, and just try a few shots. Here. Just try a few. There. Just get ridiculously close to the ball to try it. You may have to grip your club down. Initially, I grip down all my clubs now. And until I get the, the set of Cobra 1 lengths, uh, I will continue to, to grip all the clubs down. Okay guys, that, that's just you know, an overview, but, but pretty close to all you need to be doing in this golf swing. You really don't need, there's not much else you really need to do. You've got license to, to do whatever you need to do to get in that channel and keep the club in that channel and keep your shoulders closed from that back ball position. They're the things that are not negotiable. The ball position and the closed shoulders and hitting at the golf ball, they are non-negotiable. Work those out guys and whatever you have to do to do that, this, this lead foot, let it do anything it wants to. Bring it up so it's comfortable so you can make that nice that nice move into, into that trail side. I gotta tell you, if it was back here, oh, I feel terrible. I couldn't do it. Bring it up here guys. Okay guys, that's just a little bit of overview and I'll keep doing reinforcing, reinforcing, reinforcing. Uh, can't think of anything else. Yeah, it looks like it's going to rain guys, so uh, yeah, have a look at that and, uh, and we'll do more reinforcing, reinforcing, really bringing the thing down to a, a packaged finished product.